<laughs> Welcome to another episode of GUI Challenges, <laughs> where I build interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to do it your way, because with our creative minds combined, we will find multiple ways to take over this world. I mean, create interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills, and in today's GUI Challenge, we're building Transitions. <laughs> Today's challenge is a little bit more about like masking and specifically masking with clip paths. So how do we get effects that sort of um, allow us to transition elements from one state to another with a kind of elegant, you know, cinematic type of um, transition? So there's like you know, I have these like wipe transitions here. Oh, peekaboo. There's a little icon. You should recognize that one. Um, anyway, um, right. You're like revealing things. And in some ways you can like reveal something. And then as it comes back, you can have a different item here. So there's like a two part transition where you sort of like phase one out and then bring one in, which is kind of like what we do here. So we, we make trick go out and we make trick come in. Same thing with here. We have trick or treat trick or treat right? Very on, on brand for Halloween, I think. But yeah, we have trick or treat and these uh, are kind of tricky in that they had to be stacked, right? So in order from one to transition to the other kind of seamlessly, they needed to exist in the same layer. And I did this with grid and we'll, we'll check that out in a sec. But that's essentially what we're working on today is these. And then down here, we have these square out and square in and then whatever we're going to do here, and we're going to build those live. So before we do that, first, we have to reveal what there's a mystery square in the center. We're going to have to figure out what that is here in a second. And we're going to go look in the debugging corner. So let's go there and check out what we got. ClipPath has very good support. And there's really only one thing to think about it um, with ClipPath. So here I'm, I'm using the active class on these to do this transition. Here it is in Safari. So we saw it on iPad there. Here's Safari looking good. Safari on iOS. Excellent. Everything as we expect here, just down on Android, circle out, trick or treat, trick or treat. Very cool. Love the colors. And then look down here. We have um, reduced motion, just sort of like instantly doing things. So right, circle out. Well, now it's out. Here's this one. It's out. Now it's in. This one transitions between trick or treat almost instantly. This one does do it instantly. There's a slight delay in this one, which I could take out so it's a little less flashy, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think that was too harmful there. So we have trick or treat down here. Wipe out. Ooh, you got like a little sneak peek. There's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> we'll get into that one in a second. And then these down here don't do anything. So putting the transition styles behind reduced motion is how I did that. So here we just pop in here and look to see. Well, this person is currently preferring reduced motion, so they're not going to see any transition styles down here. I'd have to change it to, well, let's just change it. We'll go here to system. Uh, we want the rendering, rendering right here. Scroll down to, uh, yes, prefers reduced motion. It's currently set to reduce. We'll say no emulation. Now we get our emulation. Well, how we get our animations and we can look down here. Ah, yes, prefers reduced motion, no preference, set a transition. So it's that easy to gate these things behind a user preference. And there's how I did that there. I guess I'll just leave it now that it's there. And really, if I'm going to leave it, I can close this, which now we can get that sort of full view here into these effects. Um, and then here it is in Firefox. And so one of the things I was mentioning earlier to note was that there's a performance issue with ClipPath. And really, it's kind of debatable whether it's not an issue. I've seen ClipPath perform really, really well on low-end devices, but I've also seen it perform poorly. It kind of depends on how much it has to compete with because it's generally not off the main thread. This is on the main thread. This is like a CPU-based animation, unless you're in Safari, which I believe Safari has put this on the GPU so they get really nice um, performance in their clip path animations because the GPU is doing it. There is a Chrome effort to make this a GPU accelerated animation. It is, from what I can tell, a little stalled at the moment, but there's hope. There's hope that this animation could be GPU powered and then you kind of unlock its potential and maybe you can get more extreme with the way that you use it. I don't know. But anyway, that's the one thing to note about it. This is generally a CPU animation. When we're talking about animations, usually someone has to say something like, well, animate the transform or opacity. Everything else is sort of off limits. Clip path is not included in that list. And it is something you should be thinking about as you're um, kind of coming up with these animations using clip path. So, okay, now that we've seen it work across all these browsers, also kind of cool here, I can tab into here. And since I made it uh, focus centric, you can use focus, which is kind of cool. So here, and here's our last one. Let's just reveal it. The one that's hiding in the center here is a link to Chrome Tober. So the last episode on tooltips, we went to design December 
And today we're going to go to Chrome Tober on web.dev. Dun, 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 dun. Scroll. Scroll. And here's a project our team came up with to showcase container queries and scroll linked animations. And it's called Chrome Tober. And you can go through this animation. So as I scroll, see how the scroll bar is moving down here? We're causing an animation on the page and we're animating elements in and out based on their presence inside of the viewport. Super cool stuff. I really think you should check out this, um, this project that we made. It's really fun. Lots of little Easter eggs in here. And of course, here's the team uh, that built it and kind of neat. So anyway, that's just like a small plug. And it was an exciting piece of art to throw into the center here. So that's the Chrome Tober 2022 book. Go ahead and check out that project. Uh, just like we did Design Summer last year, we did Chrome Tober this year. So we went a spooky route instead of the Christmas cheer. Uh, and it's fun. I think it turned out really nice. So check out uh, that project. OK, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go back into Canary in the big screen or Chrome. It doesn't really matter. Clip Path is going to work great there. And we're going to edit some of those transitions. And then we're going to write some new ones from scratch. Let's go do that. Time to unearth how the Clip Path transitions are working. Get it? That was like a zombie joke. Uh, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, all right. So here we have our container. And we have a box. And the box is what is transitioning the clip path. And the container is what's looking for hover. So right off the bat, it's critical that this happens. Because if the hover here um, was clip pathing itself, then as soon as it disappeared beyond my mouse, uh, it would start to transition back. And then it would do that infinite thing that hover does. So what we're doing is we're looking for interaction on the parent and then transitioning a child. That way, the thing that you're hovering isn't being masked out and in of the mouse position. So anyway, kind of a small but important thing to note. And so if we look in here and we see our clip path, you can see that I've named some of my clip path variables here. So we have circle in. Well, let's click it and see these. We have circle in and circle out, right? And circle in is at 75% and circle out is at 0%. Let's change this right here. And just see what happens. If I shrink it, I should start to see, yeah, look at that. We can see the things that are using it, and they're transitioning to that space. So one of like a cool tip of clip path, just in general, even if you're not animating it, but is if you go 50% in the circle, look at how it's a perfectly fit circle. You might be tempted to use um, you know, border radius to do this, border radius some big number, maybe border radius 50% or whatever it is that you put in there. You could also just clip right there and do circle 50%. That's a cool tip. I like using that for circles all the time because I think it makes sense. And look, editing it is just so nice. But OK, so what we had, though, was 75%. And if we look, it is perfectly the value or 70 perfectly the value. 70 is perfectly. Oh, no, look, the corners look a little rounded there. So if we go 75%, we're ensuring that as we interact with this, it's going to scale to the entirety of the viewport of this like particular element that we want to mask. So. That's kind of a cool thing. And look at how simple this syntax is. So if you're wondering like what it's like getting started with clip path, like let's look at our square down here and just like give it a quick little clip path here. We'll say clip path circle, you know, 25%. Boom. That's how easy it is to make clip paths and circles. Like that is cool stuff right there. So tuck that into your belt for um, like use cases and things that you can do with clip path. And let's go look at the syntax for these ones here, the wipes. The wipes are using the, well, here, let's go to wipe in. We'll look at the different ones. It's using inset. So we have a wipe in set here to like, it's fully visible. See how there's no inset values at all. And these all have inset values at sort of complementary sides. So this is top, right, bottom, left. And we have wipe bottom is saying inset um, top 100%. Well, here, let's just go check this out. So we'll just edit a clip path directly on this box. We'll set clip path here. We'll paste. And I'm also going to change these two percentages, percentages. And that way, we can go edit them. So if I hit Shift and down, I can see that we're um, we're unpushing away from the top. So in this case, I'm pushing away from the top, top, top. And it gives us this effect of wiping out towards the bottom of the box. I can also pop in here and start editing these. And this one's pushing from the right, pushing from the bottom, and pushing from the left. And these are all the different ways that you can sort of manipulate these transitions to look like, um, you know, like a, an animation, like something is smearing across the screen. That's what I, I call them, the wipe animation. Let's go back down to zeros here. And so the way that I just I found all those custom properties is just by testing these things out. So I could tell that this one is going to be a good one for that particular scenario. I'll set this back to 0%. 
This one, if it's 100%, looks like it's wiping out to the left. This one, if I edit it to 100%, it looks like it's wiping out to the top, right? And to the right. And we'll just go look at those custom properties I named again because, well, it's much easier reasoning about these values if they're named applicably. So it's cool having these names. And then when we actually do the animations, also we'll get rid of that here. We can see this one's animating to an in position. Let's look at this one. This one, we'll make sure we're selecting the box and we'll make sure that we're hovering the element so that we can see the style that's being applied to the one here. And there it is, it's going from um, a wipe bottom position, so that's its default. And then as soon as we hover on the parent element, we're gonna give it a wipe in animation. And that's what gives it that, um, it restores the clip path to where there's pretty much no clip path. So we went from one that was pushed out to the bottom to one that is not there at all. And that is the basis of that trick. So let me pop out of here. Oh, here, we'll turn off this hover so we can get back to an interactive state. And let's look at how these ones worked, like trick or treat here. So this one, we have a stack. So if we turn on our grid overlay, we can see that we have a single cell. See how there's only one box in here? And we can look at our definition of the grid. It says auto flow, which is required if you're using this, the shorthand here, one FR slash one FR. So it says single column, single row. They're in the same spot. And if we look at these children, they're saying, I want to be in the first row and the first column. And both of them are going to be defined like that. So they're competing for that space and the browser will stack them on top of each other, which gives us a good opportunity to edit their animations here so that they look like they're layered on top and then we um, change the clip path. So let's look at this one here. It says wipe left. Let's change it to wipe top and we'll hover. And look, we get a different animation. It's so nice having the custom properties named because then I can sort of like articulate my transition really well. That's kind of cool. It has like a Mondrian box effect to it. I really like it. And if we do wipe from down there, look at that. That's cool stuff. Okay, well, so hopefully now you're looking at this syntax here going, that's not too spooky, right? It's just an inset. It's almost like if you're using the inset property, it's the same sort of stuff. You got top, right, bottom, left. So if that's the sort of way that we're working with these and we're getting all these cool animation styles, what is square out and square in gonna be? So if we look at this one, right? These are undefined custom properties at the moment. Let's play. So we'll say clip path, inset, We'll say 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. So essentially, if we edit these values at the same time, well, here, let's make a custom property. Um, same time, 20%. And we'll pop into here and we'll say, oh, we could even do, since this is just like margin and inset, it'll repeat. We can say var same time. There we go. And now if I edit this, we get all of them at the same time. Excellent, and really that's kind of irrelevant at this point. If we think about it, we could just put 20% inside of here. It gets repeated across all of them. So now look, that's pretty much the square out animation. Let's also do this transition, clip path, uh, well, 0.5 seconds, ease. Now as we play, we'll be able to see it transition. Okay, so if we want to go to square out, that's inset 50. So I could essentially say like square out is inset 50 and square in is going to be inset zero, right? Okay, so now we can pop in here and say var uh, square out. And there we go. So as we toggle this property, well, maybe not as we talk. Oh, because it has to have something defined underneath it. So we'll say clip path uh, var square in. Is this going to work? Let's see. No. What we want though, well, is this going to work? Yeah. Okay. So there we go. So now it, now it knows where it's coming from and where it's going to, and you can, you can see that it's interpolating there really well. Okay. So if that's square out and square in, I can just take these custom properties and let's go into Sublime and start working inside of there. Well, I'm going to work inside of Sublime, but whatever text editor you have in here, let me switch over there. All right. I've got the transitions here. Here is our square transitions document we're going to be working with. I'm going to paste these into the root since these are our named variables we just came up with. And we have our circle in. Oh, these need to be square. So let's call these square. Oh, look, those ones were square. A little preparatory uh, mistake there. All right. So now we have square in box. And what we want to do is um, set its initial clip path to var square out right so that by default it's out when we hover it's going to come in so we'll take this paste that there to square in then we want to transition this but let's transition it if 
media if the motion is okay and we'll say transition clip path 0.5 seconds ease we'll save and go back to our demo here and check if square in square in works so i thought we were doing that one but i guess yeah here that makes sense okay look square in works excellent okay well let's do square out square out its default is not going to be an out position its default is going to be in on hover it's going to be out and then we can also just copy our uh, media query here with nesting and save that now we should have square out so by default it's in right that's going to be no inset no clip path but when we hover we apply a clip path we transition it and we have no no out <laughs> square square out clip path in on hover clip path out what did we miss here let's see oh we have a whole bunch of inline styles on this particular element that are winning so there you go, square out, square in, square out, square in. You saw how we got there. We're using the sort of shorthand of clip pass, which is kind of like circle. We're getting a really, really similar effect. Now we need to work through this last one. What kind of effect do we want to do here with like a square transition? So if we look at this, we've already got our grid. We already have stacked elements. And look, there's a there's an emoji pumpkin behind here. And look, if I just click this and hit H on the keyboard, here's a kind of cool DevTools hotkey. If you hit H, you'll hide an element. Look, it applies a style and it says visual visibility hidden. You can hit H to unhide it there. So we can see that that's our transition. And how do we want these to move? Hmm. Let's get an initial implementation in here. So here we are in our transitions. We've got our square surprise, display grid. There's our grid layout. So all of the coloring is done in here. Now we need to sort of give these an animation. So each box is going to, do I still have that in here? Each box is going to need a transition. The second box, which is the one we currently see, let's give that one a clip path that puts it out. And uh, we'll just use one of our variables for now. We'll use square out. Okay, and if I save and go back, Look, now we're looking at the pumpkins because we've essentially masked out the one that's on top. And on hover, we're going to want to take the one that's uh, currently right, nth child two. This one needs to transition in, and this one needs to transition out. And if we go back and check it out, look at that. We've got, oh, but it's not going both directions. It goes in, but not out. So there's a definition missing somewhere here. And I think it's just a default one here for square in. And now, yes, so now it knows to go from and to. We've made it explicit. We can see that there. It looks great. For in terms of a lesson, I think that was pretty good though. Like we've got um, the ingredients are here. And if you want to look up more clip path stuff, so if we go to look at more clip path opportunities, there are other functions that you can call. So look, there's circle, which is one we studied. We didn't study ellipse. Ellipse is like a circle, except the two different sides, um, they're not equally parallel on all sides. You'll get like a you know, an oval type shape and that gives you an opportunity to create oval type shapes we did go over inset and we didn't go over polygon this is another really cool one and polygon uh, is much more complex you use two positions for each one and it allows you to do like diamond shapes um, really cool other type of shapes angular things um, it's a much more complex syntax but you can go find a lot of these pre-made for you and you can kind of work with them so i thought we would just show the essentials today work through setting these things up with custom properties and you know introduce you to Polygon a little bit, but I'm not gonna type one out right now. I think that would be a little uh, tough to live code. All right, so that's essentially the GUI challenge today though, is we we learned about clip path. We learned about, you know, like its performance implications. We learned about how to set things up so that they can stack on top of each other and kind of get really cool interactions where one item is going out and another one is coming in. You could even think about like a form. You hit submit on a form, and it, and it goes out and then it says, hi, we're submitting your stuff to the server or whatever. And then it transitions a new item back in and it says complete. So you can use these transitions to walk people through different guides. You can use it as, in terms of like state for when they submit things. There's all sorts of cool use cases for it. And the last thing I want to share is I do have a site called transition.style where I've essentially defined tons and tons of custom property clip paths with names so that you can easily test out. Look at this one does a circle into the top right. This one does a circle with a little bit of a hesitation in there, which is kind of cool. Um, so here's a circle. Um, these are in and then you can have out bottom right. So you have like in bottom right, out bottom right. You get kind of a cool effect over here. In bottom right is a lot cooler than let's do out circle top left. Uh, I don't know. The in ones look so much cooler. It's because they like come from the center and then like 
burst out to the side. I don't know. Here's square ones, right? We just made that super simple uh, set of styles, right? So all of these you can use. And what's funny too, you can see the little like um, copy icon here. And every time you click one of these, it actually puts it into your clipboard. So here, if I open up a new uh, tab and just hit paste, it says keyframes, square out top right, clip path zero, clip path right. So you can just come uh, to this site and take these. And then let's check out some of the polygons because these are kind of cool. So there's a diamond in, here's diamond out, uh, in diamond with a hesitation, out diamond with a hesitation, uh, opposing corners, right, going in and out. And then a new one that just got added is this cinematic one which I really like because um, they always do that in movies where like, you'll be like, oh, this is cool. But then they're about to enter a dream and they enter a dream and it goes like this. It's like super widescreen. Um, anyway, it can be kind of a cool effect. So all sorts of really fun things can be done with clip path and transitions and animations or just, you know, transitioning them like we did today. I hope you enjoyed this GUI challenge on masking and clip paths and have a great Halloween. I'll see y'all on the next GUI challenge.